So now in this video we're going to look at our first 7400 series integrated circuit for this video series. So we're going to look at the 74HC14. So the 7414HC is a type, that means high speed CMOS. There's also a common version LS for low power shot key. And then a lot of different versions, but uh, those are the main two. But in any case, the 7414 has this pin layout right here. It's a hex. There's six. Hex for six. Integrated circuits in there. They are basically not gates, but uh, more descriptively, they are Schmidt trigger inverters. And uh, so they're Schmidt triggers because the uh, input, it's high and low, so basically on and off, or uh, zero volts and uh, five volts, five volts for on, high, or one, zero for uh, off, low, or zero right there, zero volts. The input though is not uh, specifically zero and five volts. The uh, input, we're gonna use a trim pot, we can get a range of voltages, and it's gonna be high when it's halfway or above, and then when you drop it down, it's going to stay high until you get to about a third of the uh, supply voltage, and then it's going to go low. And it's going to stay low until you get about halfway up again, and then it will flip high right there. So that's why it is a Schmidt trigger. It's not one defined point. Around this range here, the uh, input's going to stay the same, and thus the output's going to stay the same. The main thing though is when we have a high input, we will have a low output so basically ground there low when we have a low input then we will have a high output so basically 5 volts won't get quite all the way to 5 volts it should get though uh, pretty close to 0 volts that's the uh, main thing so there's the true table inputs high outputs low inputs low output is high so I've gone over uh, not gates before or digital inverters the uh, recommended voltage for this integrated circuit I'll just point out really quick is 2 to 6 volts that's the recommended range so 5 volts uh, that's really kind of what they were intended for but you got a little more flexibility than that but do not go above 7 it, they're really not uh, higher voltage components so 5 is good uh, don't leave the inputs floating you're gonna see jumpers coming to all of the inputs we are not using they're either going to the positive supply or the negative supply. You don't want to leave them floating. They'll uh, pick up stray signals and uh, make the integrated circuit waste power and other undesirable things. That's a bigger topic to study in more detail later. I'll just mention that now. Don't leave them floating. So we uh, will have a trim pot setting the voltage. Then we'll have the output. We're going to do something I do a lot. I'm going to color code these LEDs. When the output is low, basically it connects to ground, you'll see we have a current path there to light the blue LED. When the output is high, so it's close to 5 volts as it can get, then the uh, current will go through that resistor and the red LED. So red for high output, blue for low output. And so here we have it on the board. It's not quite uh, complete yet, but uh, mostly. You can see we got the little divot there. So that's a pin one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then you work your way across. And then eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. 14 pins. We got to power it, VCC there, and ground down here. So we got the red LED there. The blue LED up here, of course, the long lead, the anode towards the positive side. Short lead the cathode down one row to a blank row. And then the uh, short lead, the cathode, to the gray jumper there, to zero volts there, and then we have the long lead up one row. So first I'm going to wire the blue LED with a one kilo ohm resistor because they just naturally get brighter. Oh yeah, forgot to mention that uh, you can see this is an input, that's an input, and that is an input. The outputs are right below the uh, input. So they're not floating, they're directly to a supply rail. We're going to use this input, so it's not floating, we have something to it, but we have this uh, input up here, directly to the positive supply, we can leave the outputs floating, and then that input is directly to the positive supply, we're powering VCC and ground, 
on uh, those two pins that we saw earlier. This is our variable. So the uh, power supply is already on. We have five volts right there and up to uh, 20 milliamps of current. And so I'm going to uh, finish wiring this. Again, going to that output right below the input we're controlling. And we have the uh, red LED, which uh, should have turned on. And now I attach the uh, alligator clips coming from the power supply there. And we have power. As you can see, the red LED is lit. I will quickly uh, turn the dial here, raise the uh, voltage there. Now we have a low output. We got more positive blue LEDs lit up. We have a lot less current with the uh, blue LED. It's just naturally brighter. So I have a one kilo ohm resistor to protect the uh, blue LED. 220 ohms to protect the red LED. So less resistance, more current flows. It's just not as bright of an LED. So we will uh, zoom in and take a look at this. So we're all the way to zero volts right there. And we got zero volts there so you know that the output is high right now. And so I'm gonna slowly turn this up. We'll get to about halfway right there. Now the output went low. So we're more than halfway to the positive supply. Now we're gonna go this way. And uh, you can see we went past the halfway point we're getting to somewhere around about a third of the way, approximately. So that's down, but a high output right there. So the output is inverted from the signal we're given at the input. And now uh, let's take a look at those voltages. So I got my pocket oscilloscope there. Cable comes out to these alligator clips. I clipped them to jumpers so that I can easily move them. This one's already to the negative rail. Our voltage that we look at on here will be in relationship to zero volts right there so I'm gonna go to where that white jumper is for the trim pot so it's set all the way down to uh, zero we have zero volts and the red LED lit up now I'll turn the uh, trim pot up and we'll look at where it flips should be about uh, 2.5 I'm guessing looks like uh, maybe just a tad bit above but in case there we go about halfway and we can keep going up now we're gonna go down until the red LED lights up and uh, so it's uh, right about there so it looks like about two volts and then about two and a half volts for it to go high two volts to go low two and a half to go high we can look at what the output is doing so again that is to the white jumper now we're gonna go to that goes to the trim pot now we're gonna go to the output so it's high right now and you can see it's uh, a little shy of five volts, but it's close, about four and a half. And then I'll turn the uh, trim pot. I can turn it down, it's either high or low. One of those two states, not gonna move. So I'll turn the trim pot up, now it goes down. It does go all the way down to ground. So that's common for integrated circuits, where the output will go to ground really nicely, but not all the way to the positive supply when it's outputting. So in any case, Hopefully that all made sense. This video is long enough, so I'm going to end it here. Make sure you check out one of the other videos that I'm posting. Click like, subscribe, the bell, all that. Donate to Patreon if you can. That helps out a ton. I will see you in the next video.